How's the family this morning? Good having you all here today. Let's thank the band, man. What a great job. You know, there's somebody we miss every week back here at the back. We got Mr. Ron Townley and Mark Lombach. This wouldn't be made possible. We wouldn't hear any music or any sound that wasn't for these guys. Let's give them a hand. What do you say? You know, I picked this video because Terry and I are hockey fans. Some of you may not know, Terry was the Middle Lothian High School High school ice hockey coach for the first team ever played ice hockey out of Middle Lothian, Terry. And champions. Yeah. And champions. First two years, uh, we were state champions, so it was pretty cool. So we love hockey. Uh, even though Coach Herb Brooks here, his speech is a little colorful. Moment, y'all don't need to send me an email telling me that. He encouraged his team to take full advantage of this opportunity before. During the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, New York, the USA hockey team played the Soviet Union in the medal round of the men's hockey tournament. The Soviet Union team was a four-time defending gold medal and heavily favored team at the time. It was here where the United States upset them and won the game 4-3. to three. You know, at this time, there was a lot going on in our country, as many of you remember, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I got to see the movie, The Miracle. I watched it live like many of you did. That kind of tells my age. But there's, there was so much going on in the country at that time. Under President Jimmy Carter, we had high gas prices and gas shortages. There was tension between the USA and the Soviet Union. So this game was an opportunity not only for these young players, but for America to lift the spirits of our country, and that's just what it did. It set the country back on fire, got them excited from all the things going on. And the USA team took advantage of this opportunity and gave everything that they had in an effort to win that game. You know, every game they came from behind, even in this game, to win. They had the drive, and they had a great coach. They had a coach that, that drove them, push them to get the best out of them. So a great opportunity was set upon them. Not only was it in the winning, but many of the players moved on and gained a career in the National Hockey League. So it befit this opportunity that they grabbed hold of benefited them long-term also. The question is, do we sometimes ourselves miss great opportunities? Because we don't believe that we're good enough to take advantage of that opportunity at that time. If you join me, we're going to open our Bibles this morning in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Tiberius, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Blind Bartimaeus had an un unforgettable opportunity. The day he heard Jesus was passing down the street of Jericho. He had a, remember, unforgettable opportunity right here. There were us many sick people there also. And oppressed people right there along the roadside. But Bartimaeus, he took advantage of the opportunity. He wasn't going to sit there and be quiet. He was going to take advantage of that opportunity right there. You know, the others, they were, they were content, speculating. You know, while Bartimaeus, he grabbed the opportunity, 
for the chance of being healed. So everybody's sitting back, even if they're told to be quiet, he wasn't going to be quiet. Know anybody like that? There's lots of folks. I got one. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to act. In our power to act. There's so many times, so many times that God provides us with an opportunity to help or witness to others that we allow to pass us by. We should never put off what we know when we can be a blessing to others if we're capable of doing so. The dictionary defines opportunity as a favorable juncture of circumstances when something could happen. It is a moment at which actions of importance or significance can be taken. It is a moment of time in our lives that when maximized will define and impact your life and the life of others and your destiny in life. Opportunity is an event circumstance or situation planned by God to advance our salvation, deliverance, healing, and success in our lives. Through prayer, God provides us with discernment. Good word there. Discernment about when an opportunity is right and the right time to take advantage of it. Discernment. We, I know many people in this church that has discernment. They can discern when something feels right or it's right, and they can discern when it's wrong. But God puts that in, in our lives, like I say, through different, through different events, different things. Every turning point in life is a result of an opportunity we make effective use of. Every result, I mean every uh, point in our life. If we recognize and utilize it, we'll have success. Many times, if God's leading that opportunity. If we miss it, there's often times of regret, sadness, and failure in our lives because we miss the opportunity. Yesterday, I missed the opportunity at a bass tournament. I had the fish, and I had him on. That's a fisherman's deal, right? He's about this long. But I had him on, and I lost the fish. So... I had the opportunity. Many of us have that opportunity. What was it? Were my hooks not sharp enough? You know, did I not set the hook good? You know, I got every excuse in the world. But we shouldn't have excuses when God gives us the opportunity to do something. Opportunities are sometimes missed because many are at ease in their comfort zone. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. They're right there. So they miss opportunities because, once again, Sometimes they miss opportunities because the glass is half empty instead of being half full. Some Christians waste divine opportunities to share the gospel because of their love for worldly things instead of godly things. Amen? Many opportunities are missed because there is a price involved or because of the fear of failure. Many opportunities we miss because we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone, afraid to step out of our box, Fear has a lot to do with it, and sometimes there's a cost. Sometimes you're going to get criticized or you're going to get frowned on or whatever if you take advantage of an opportunity and somebody doesn't agree with you, right? And there's always going to be someone that doesn't agree with you. And sometimes opportunities may look like a tough challenge to us or it's coincidence when they're really not. Opportunities are the hand of God at work in situation or events with the aim, aim of fulfilling his will for our lives. We probably never look at it there. It wasn't an accident that when David was placed in front of Goliath to do battle, that wasn't an accident. That opportunity was given by God to David to advance his plan for David's future. It, was, it wasn't an accident. God had already already prepared David. He had already put him in front of a bear and a lion that he killed and gave him courage. I don't know that he gave him courage. I like the way they say it. He put him in a position to show courage. Amen? And David did. So he, he was using that opportunity to further the plans of David. God had already given David every other kind of tool. He put him in the right place at the right time. Amen? The opportunity was up to David. 
Queen Elizabeth the first was the richest person in the world in her time. On her dying bed, her last words were, I would give all my kingdom for one more moment of time. Time is defined as a period of available resource under your control and significant to accomplish something. That's how time's defined. This is the most valuable asset in life. If we lose money, we can make more money, but if we lose time, we'll never get it back. It's gone. Walt Disney was planning Disneyland at one time, and he offered a friend the opportunity to buy up the scrub land surrounding where he was going to build Disneyland. He knew the land would increase in value, but his friend said he would think about it. Because Disney needed an answer quickly to move forward, his friend missed the opportunity and tremendous wealth by not taking advantage of the opportunity offered when he was capable of doing so. He said, I'll wait. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying jump at every opportunity. Every opportunity should be prayed upon and God led. Amen? So don't just leave here today and say, hey, Brother Reggie told me to go do this. And then come back and go, man, I lost everything. Wait a minute, I didn't say that. Opportunities are achieved through careful prayer, discernment from God, and considering using a little common sense helps too. It was the brilliant cartoon philosopher Pogo who once observed, Gentlemen, we are surrounded by insurmountable opportunities. Too often, what we perceive as obstacles like no money, no machinery, and no manpower are God's opportunities in disguise. Have you ever seen an opportunity and it doesn't look right to you and you're thinking, well, maybe not, maybe so, and then you pass it by and then someone else achieves, takes hold of that opportunity and achieves great success with it. That happens. We should never, ever miss an opportunity because it's dressed up in a misleading costume and it's looking like a problem. I don't know of an opportunity one that's not a problem at some point, right? So if we looked at every opportunity as a problem, then we would never take advantage of any opportunity. If we fail to seize the opportunity God puts before us, it doesn't necessarily mean God's finished with us. That's not what that means. I mean, if God lays an opportunity in front of us and we don't take advantage of it, it doesn't mean that he's done with us. We'd have to remember what uh, Jesus told the Jewish leaders when they failed to grasp that he was their long-awaited Messiah. Well, he tried to tell them, and they, that was an opportunity for them also, and they just let it pass by. Matthew chapter 21, verse 43 says, Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce for its fruit. So here as a result, Israel reluctance to walk through the door of salvation before them. Right then, God turned to the Gentiles and offered them the gospel. Now, that doesn't mean he was done with Israel. That doesn't mean he was finished. He just offered that opportunity to someone else. And now it happens with us from time to time when we don't seize an opportunity that God's put right in front of us. Some people, that, and I know people this way, they've gotten halfway through a door opened by God and then turned around and walked back out when they encountered a problem. Think you're never going to have any problems because you're a Christian? Hell. Actually, we should encounter more problems because Satan ought to come after us right then, right? He should say, no, 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 because that's his deal. He doesn't want us closer to God. So we're going to run into problems. We're going to have trials and problems in our life. Most people think we must not have heard God correctly, right? There's a problem here. In this opportunity, there are several problems. We must not have heard God correctly. Maybe we just thought we heard God, right? They're thinking this, got, this opposition right here, this can't be the opportunity they're looking for because this can't be from God because it's got problems in it. Everything's going to have a problem from time to time, isn't it? If it's smooth sailing, you know, I think we don't appreciate it as much sometimes. Some of you may. I know we don't because some things we go through, my wife and I, from time to time, 
you know, we think that we pray about it and it's from God, but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. God wants you to work at it a little bit. He wants you to get off your tail, and, right? Do something else besides sit there and wait on him. Hey, God, you gave me this. Now make it happen. It didn't work like that. We have to put some effort into it. If Paul, had, had if he had anticipated opposition when he was going through God's open doors, we should too. Paul knew they were going to opposition. Everywhere God sent him, there was some opposition there. But God gave him opportunities to witness and share, right? So in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8, join me there. And Paul's speaking here. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8, Paul speaking. But I will stay at Ephesus until Pentecost, because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. He could have walked away right then and said, wait a minute, there's, there's problems here. Why, why would God be sending me here? Why would he give me the opportunity to be here, and then everybody's against me? Opposition can actually be a sign that you heard from God. You ever see it that way? And you heard from him correctly. And Satan is doing all he can to discourage you and cause you to turn around and go the other way. Even though you know in your heart you heard from God. Well, I would say this. If there's a lot of opposition, then it's a good thing. Because Satan is trying to stop it. He don't want you to have any part of it. You know, when God's light and gospel needs sharing with others, we oftentimes shy away from that. And we turn around and walk away, not feeling comfortable doing so or not feeling adequate to do so. This is where discernment comes in. God offers us opportunities through discernment for others so we can be a witness for him. Terry shared an opportunity of discernment from God that she had this week. And we were talking about the message here and she was given the opportunity to share comfort and God's love with someone in need this week. And the way it was shared to me that Terry has a lady that works in uh, her area and the lady just looked distressed. She just looked miserable. She's kind of shy and laid back anyway. Am I right about that? But she looked like she really had some problems going on. So Terry approached her out of discernment, knowing something's going on, and asked her what was going on. And she had a multitude of problems, but her son had been in a car wreck. And tore up the car. And Terry had the opportunity to share with her, the car's damaged, but your son's still here. Right? And her words of encouragement helped this lady, along with prayer. Terry prayed for her right there on the spot. And this lady even told Terry, I needed that. I needed to hear that today. Because you're right, my son's a lot more important than any vehicle. Sometimes we, we don't see that, but... Once again, discernment from God gave her the opportunity to share God's love and wisdom. I think that's where we miss because sometimes we get uncomfortable. Once again, we get out of our comfort zone or we don't feel adequate to be able to do that. Sometimes we just got to step out of the box, right? We just got to step out in faith and say, God, I know you're tugging at me. Now I need to go do this. But sometimes we just pass that by. In the book of Colossians, the Apostle Paul talks about how important these opportunities are. If you'll join me there, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Once again, Paul speaking here. It says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and thankful heart. Pray for us too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. In short, Take every opportunity to let the light of Jesus shine through us to others. That's what Paul's saying right here. Not only your words, but your actions. 
should fit your words. Amen. God not only places opportunities before us to let his glory be revealed, but to encourage us and strengthen us for his will and his plan. One thing we need to get out of the way is our will and our plan. Right? If you have a plan, then make sure it's God's plan also. Right? Talk to God about it. If an opportunity comes open for you, stop what you're doing. I had to learn. She just taught me lately, don't jump. It'll still be there tomorrow. Right? Pray about it. But don't pray about it and jump into it. Pray about it and wait. Be still. No, I am God. Right? Be still. Wait on God to give you a clear answer before you jump in it. But don't think because there's some opposition to it, it's not the right opportunity. Satan's not wanting you to move forward in any opportunity in your life. Satan could have very well intervened right there when David went to stand before Goliath and gave David all the reasons he was hearing from everybody around him that he's too small, he's not, he's not adequate, he's not good enough to do this. Right? David could have walked away from that. But he didn't. Because his faith in God was so much stronger than what everybody else was telling him. Right? I think that's where we have to stand sometimes. We have to stand up and say, hey, my faith's going to get me through this. I'm not going to turn and run from it. If God's with us, he can be against us. Amen? Before the release of the movie, The Miracle, Coach Herb Brooks was killed in an automobile accident. A quote was made referring to Herb Brooks in the movie. It was said like this. He never saw it. He lived it. Life's short, folks. We all know that. We don't know when our time's going to come. Only God knows that. So let's not miss at all an opportunity that God's placed before us that we would turn and walk away from when it's part of his will and his plan. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning and lift this day to you, Father. We're just so thankful for the blessing and mercy that you show upon us. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to come sit in this building, feel your presence throughout, Father, that you set among us. And Father, we're thankful for the opportunities you put in our lives. Father, that... I pray today that we might just open our eyes to the discern, using discernment for these opportunities, that we pray to you that it's an opportunity that you open for us, Father, that we're going to take advantage of that, and it's going to help us step forward in your will and your plan for our lives. Father, let us be strong. Give us the strength. Give us the opportunity to be courageous when we step out of the box and we witness to others, but let us be that shining light that shines through us from you to others that we might encourage them and uplift them also. Father, we love you and we praise you. We pray that everything we said and did here today was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.